Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about drawing hands. Just a quick introduction for beginners really and one or two pointers when drawing the hand. Now to begin with I think really the first thing that we should say is as beginners quite often we're very daunted about drawing the human body and anatomy and we tend to say things like oh I can't draw people etc. Now if you can draw a tree or an apple or a house you can draw also draw a person and the thing is we've got a stumbling block in our minds we have this I can't draw a person attitude but look at the person as a series of lines and shapes and if you look at them as a series of lines and shapes and not have this block there saying that's a person I can't draw it and just take every shape and every line one at a time then you will find you become much more confident and it becomes much easier to draw a person so it's really good practice um, there's nothing more complicated really than the human body for you to practice on with your drawing it's great to go to life drawing classes if you can so really you've always got your own hand there when we push for time especially at this time of year when there's so much more going on if you want a little quick drawing exercise to keep your eye in and to keep you practicing just sit down with a pad it can be you know when you're sat in front of the telly of an evening or whatever get your sketch pad out put pop your hand one of your hands your non-drawing hand on your knee and draw it with the other hand um, and you can't complain to yourself for moving as you might with a model it's up to you to keep that position and draw your own hand and try a few different positions and also if you can put something light underneath your hand so that the, the shapes show up more easily try it flat try it tilted try it the other way up but it's really really good drawing practice to just have a go and keep doing it so I just wanted to tell you one or two things really to make it less daunting so if we look at this picture this is one I got off Pixabay and this is two people holding hands so we've actually got two arms on this side and just the one on the other side of these two people holding hands and of course it's sort of flexed at that angle so the hand is very rarely flat you're very rarely going to be drawing it like that you know if you're drawing a portrait and somebody's got it resting on their lap etc or if they're holding something when they're walking even they're not going to be holding it flat and each finger isn't going to be evenly spaced etc it's always going to be different every time so it's really a case of observing and properly looking and taking your time but there's one thing that you can do that makes it much more simple and for this I'm just going to take a pen and I'm actually going to draw over the top of this photograph just to explain to you so if we look actually look first of all at my hand just roll my sleeve up a little bit your hand is really extending all the way down to here if you follow these bones down they're going all the way along so don't think of your fingers are stopping here the, these bones are carrying on all the way up to your wrist so that's one thing to keep in mind think about the skeleton underneath because that's obviously how the hand is shaped and where things can look believable if you have a finger in a position where it doesn't look as if it can be believably attached to this bone here then it's going to look wrong to the viewer they're going to think it looks like you've got a broken finger or something but break the hand down into parts so you've got this very wide part here and ignore the thumb for now we'll do that as a separate part so go with this one part here this shape here which is very much a triangular shape and then the thumb off there and then if you think of these fingers as a block also so you've got two blocks here and here you've got this triangular shape and then you've got the thumb which we'll think of separately so if we look on this photograph you can't see this lady's thumb actually it's over the other side but that main block that I talked about was here slightly narrower at this end than it always going to be than it is at this end and then you've got the fingers fitting into more or less that shape there and if you break it down like that you're going to find it much easier and then look at where the knuckles line up and you can draw a line along there and you can also see where these knuckles line up and then we know that a thumb is over here somewhere and by breaking it down like that it becomes much much easier to all fit in and then you've got the second knuckle this one here which doesn't bend that much at the end there okay so if you want to start and transfer the hand shape onto the paper now and take a look at that it's not as easy to see now that I've scribbled all over it but we'll go with that first shape there 
pop that in and actually look at the length of the fingers compared to the length of here it's very similar if we look at that that finger there is a similar length to my hand and of course everybody's hands are going to be different there's always going to be exceptions to these rules and then we've got the, that line of knuckles as I said going there and the shape of the a thumb there going backwards and a bit of the underside of the palm showing there and if you want you can start and put a little bit of an indication of where the, the wrists going and that's what you need to start off with those shapes that shape and this shape and then put the fingers in afterwards if you start by doing your drawing sorry I'll just move over a page if you start by doing a drawing by drawing the hand and then drawing on every finger like this it looks very childlike and it looks as if your finger stops here as I said before it doesn't it continues all the way along so don't draw your fingers one at a time like that think of them as a block shape and then start and fit the the shapes in and you're just going to work it up and think about where the shadows are where these second joints are you can see that fingers curling over slightly there and build it up as you go along and obviously you're going to have a lot more time to refine refine this nails are very difficult it can look very contrived the way we put nails on if we're not careful and look very carefully at the shape of, of them here where they're actually joined so when you're seeing it from the side you want that nice curve there so that was the first thing I wanted to tell you was about getting those blocks in as guidelines and then fitting everything into it rather than setting off and doing a line of the outside it's a much much easier way to work then the second thing I wanted you really to think about was the effect of pressure on your hand you're very rarely going to have no pressure on your hand often you're going to be holding an object or it's going to be lent against something or it's going to be lent against another hand and if you think of your, your finger as a you know column um, a spherical shape there as soon as you put pressure on that that shape changes you know something it's if it's leaning on something that shape changes that's going to make it more lifelike and more convincing so you see there you put the pressure on there and immediately that becomes a different shape and then you get your shadows in different areas as well so we're doing a 3d object we need to get that coming around here as well as this flat shape of the top so don't forget that and all that's going to come with your shading and your shadowing and there are so many lines to get in here and if you look at these veins here they're actually coming up and over so that's casting a shadow down this side and all those little tiny details that you get in are going to make all the difference to making it more lifelike however if you put every single little line in that you could see you could soon make my hand look like I'm about 90 years old you could you can really overdo it by putting every single last line in so just be careful about knowing when to stop and leaving it and how much detail you actually want to put in so once you've got your basic shaping then I would look at where the shadows are on the photograph that I've got there aren't actually that many shadows because it's obviously got a flash of a camera light um, and it's really illuminated everything but obviously each individual finger is going to cast shadow on the next finger so your shape is going to really build up when you start getting your shadows in so that's the next thing to do get your basic shapes in and get your shadows in and just keep working up and working up so another thing about drawing hands really um, so that's the really the main two things I want you to think about when you sat there just doing your own hand is to get the basic shapes in fit everything into it and then think about where the pressure is and where the shadows are and build it up from there the other thing is if you're doing um, something from a distance I'll go over two pages we've got that silly little picture there so if somebody's at a distance and you can just see with the head and shoulders there and they're walking away from us perhaps the feet there the hands are very often just two lines the lower than you think if you stand and put your hands down you'll find your wrists come in line with your hips and your hands are down there but from a distance just think about these lines here that one line and then another line and you can just 
indicate a hand like that and it makes it so much more simple so that goes back to what I said at the beginning look for the lines look for the shapes forget that it's a person that you're drawing and just draw what's in front of you with the lines and the shapes that you see so we're concentrating on using our eye rather than letting our mind fill in the blanks and this is something I've talked about before with landscapes etc is because we are very familiar with an object we let our mind fill in the blanks so we know that a hand is this shape with five fingers and we start drawing it without properly looking at it forget that forget what your mind knows and use your eyes and rely on your eyes and if your eye doesn't see it don't draw it just draw the lines that you can see and concentrate and build it up and build it up and you'll find that your confidence grows that way so I know that was a very quick video today as I said it's a busy time of year so I'm struggling to fit my videos in and things with everything else that's going on at the moment but I hope you found that useful um, it is important really to practice drawing and it will help with all your other paintings might not be an exciting thing just drawing a hand but it will help you when you come on to do your next painting of something else the fact that you're training your eye to really look it's always important to do observational drawing Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll be back again with you next week with another tutorial or demonstration. Enjoy your painting and drawing and bye for now.